What if I told you that quantum mechanics is merely the consequence of a lack of information? Would you believe me? Let's find out. Welcome to the Bottom Turtle Channel. Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. I'm Theoretical Physicist Dr. Shannon Ray, and I want to start this video by thanking everybody for their comments and subscribing and liking our, my last video. The video did surprisingly well beyond what I expected. We got over 5,000 views, which is great for a small channel like mine. We got over 300 new subscribers, which is really phenomenal. And I got a lot of really strong words of encouragement in the comments and a lot of interest in the ideas that I shared. So this is all very encouraging because I truly believe that sharing these ideas and communicating them to you guys is the most important thing I should be doing right now. And I really hope that this channel can be successful so that I can continue to do the research that I think is most important and bring it to you. So remember, every time you like a video, subscribe to the channel, make a comment or share it with a friend, you are essentially donating to my research fund so that I can become a independent researcher and continue to bring these ideas to you guys. So please don't forget to do that and every donation counts and I really appreciate the help. At the end of my last video, I said I was gonna reconceptualize all of reality using nothing but the concept of information. And so to put my money where my mouth is, I wanna go straight for the juggler in today's video by giving my understanding of what I think quantum mechanics is in terms of information, entropy, symmetry, and broken symmetry, uh, just like the themes of my previous videos. And so to do that, I wanna frame this video in the context of the paper, Quantum Mechanics as Quantum Information Mostly by Christopher Fuchs, who is a professor at the University of Massachusetts, Boston. And the purpose of this paper is to challenge the physics community to come up with a very simple principle that is intuitive and physically motivated that explains why we use the mathematics that we use in quantum physics. And so he likens it to back when Einstein developed his theories of relativity and how the mathematics of relativity existed pre-Einstein. But what Einstein's major contribution was, was very simple principles that allowed people to frame these mathematical equations in a way that had very deep consequences and really made a lot of sense. And so that's what I want to do in today's video. I want to address Chris Fuchs by providing what I think is the foundational principle of quantum mechanics that explains why we use the mathematics of quantum mechanics that we use. And essentially, my principle is this. There is no exactness. That is, no physical system has an exact state, which is to say that there isn't infinite information in any physical system. Quantum mechanics is merely the consequence of a lack of information. And as you all know who've been watching the channel, we know that a lack of information implies entropy, and we know that entropy implies symmetry. So what this does is it directly connects the lack of information to symmetry, and when you look at quantum mechanics and the mathematics of quantum mechanics, you'll notice that it's all based on symmetry. And so with that, let's get into it. To begin my justification for my principle, I want to start by looking at how symmetries arise due to a lack of information by looking at the problem of trying to define a point in a continuum. Imagine you're trying to define a point on a continuum number line between 0 and 1, and so you provide the constraint data 0 0.65. The problem with this is every digit past the 5 is not well defined, so this gives rise to a new interval between 0 0.65 and 0 0.66 where all of the values that are strictly less than 0 0.66 are consistent with the constraint data 0 0.65. So you might say to yourself, well, let me fix another digit of precision so I can try to define a point in a continuum. So now you fix the data 0 0.652. Well, this just creates a new interval between 0.652 and 0.653, where all the values strictly less than 0.653 are consistent with the constraint data 0.652. As we can see, no matter how many digits of precision that you give, there are always an infinite number of digits that are not well defined. And this will always give rise to a interval that is consistent with whatever constraint data that you provided. That is, it's precisely the idea of this. Less information, more information. Less information, more information. And we can see how each subsequent interval that arises when fixing constraint data is consistent with how we've been discussing the concept of symmetry so far in terms of a many-to-one mapping. 
In this case, we can see that 0.65 is our constraint data or our macro data, and all the digits after the five are our microstates that are consistent with the macro data. What this example shows is that in a continuum, there are no points. There are only sets. Sets of things that are consistent with the provided constraint data and sets of things that are not consistent with the constraint data. The things that are consistent with the constraint data are associated with a symmetry, and these are due to a lack of information. And when you give more digits of precision, the size of the symmetry just keeps getting smaller, which is consistent with analyzing the system at smaller scales. You're essentially constantly zooming in, trying to chase down a lack of resolution in an infinite regression. But we have to ask ourselves, can we just keep on zooming in forever, or do we eventually hit an information limit which is consistent with something like a machine precision of the universe? After all, information has to be stored in physical energy and matter. Therefore, infinite information would require infinite energy and matter. So instead of assuming infinite energy everywhere, I think it makes more sense to assume something like a machine precision, and beyond that precision, there is nothing but symmetry, or the quantum. So to continue to argue for my principle of quantum mechanics, which is that there's always a lack of information and quantum, quantum mechanics is a consequence of that, I want to look at a paper written by Nobel Prize winning physicist Anton Zeilinger back in 1999. And that paper is called A Foundational Principle of Quantum Mechanics, where just like Christopher Fuchs, he was attempting to provide a foundational principle that of quantum mechanics that is similar to that which Einstein provided for his theory of relativity that are intu intuitive and physically motivated that can bring some sort of clarity to this quantum craziness that seems to be confusing scientists for so long. And so Anton Zeilinger's main argument is this. First, he makes the same argument that I've made in the past, which is that the nature of information is the ability to predict the future, by stating that all knowledge we can have about reality are contained within the truth of propositions. We make observations about the object in the past, which then gives us information about that system, which we then can use to make predictions about future outcomes or future measurements of that system. He then introduces the concept of an elementary system, where an elementary system is one that contains the truth of a single proposition. That is, he is looking at the binary as the simplest system that we can imagine. And so from that, he gives the principle that a elementary system only contains one bit of information which is to say that an elementary system can only provide information to predict the outcome of a single measurement. And this is important because in quantum mechanics, the elementary system or the two level system is a qubit. And so given this principle, which is what he's proposing as the foundational principle of quantum mechanics, which is that an elementary system only has one bit of information, he uses it to demonstrate that for a quantum two-level system or a quantum elementary system, there is an irreducible amount of uncertainty associated with it that can't be avoided. So to demonstrate this irreducible uncertainty in measurements in quantum mechanics, Zeilinger looks at the measurement of a qubit. In quantum mechanics, a qubit can be represented by something called the block sphere, which is a sphere where every point on the surface of the sphere is a valid state of a qubit. And so we notice here that we have a z-axis, a y-axis, and an x-axis. And the point associated with the North Pole is associated with the spin of the system being pointed along the positive z-axis. So we say that that is in an eigenstate of the z-axis. What this means is that if I orient my measurement device to make a measurement in the direction of the positive z-axis, I'll get a one, which represents true. And if I were to make a measurement along the negative z-axis, I'd get a zero, which is associated with false. This is the single proposition measurement that can be given of that quantum system, which is the question, what is the spin of the system? Is it spin up or is it spin down along the z-axis? But from Zeilinger's principle, we know that an elementary system only has one bit of information. So if you were to ask the question, what is the spin of the system along the x-axis, then you would have to be completely uncertain. Because it's in an eigenstate in the z-direction, 
that means that it can't possibly contain information about what you would measure along the x direction or the y direction and this is why you have an irreducible amount of uncertainty it's because at most it can provide one bit of information which can give you a definite answer along one axis but because there are multiple axes that you can measure across it's not possible for this system to give you information in any other direction Here's the kicker to all of this. Here's the reason why I brought all of this up. You may be asking yourself, why is it that for a classical system, you don't have this problem of an irreducible amount of uncertainty, but for quantum systems, you do? Well, the difference is, is that when you go from a classical state to a quantum state, the elementary system is described by a Lie group symmetry, and that Lie group symmetry is SU2. That is what the block sphere represents. The block sphere is a way of visually representing the symmetry group SU2. And so it's because quantum states are inherently described by symmetry groups or associated with symmetry groups that you have this extra level of uncertainty. That's why you have this whole continuum of extra axes along which you can make a measurement, which is the reason why there's the irreducible uncertainty in Zeilinger's example. Essentially, what I've been saying this entire time, remember, is that entropy is ignorance, and entropy implies symmetry. And so if there is symmetry, then there is ignorance. And so this seems to be a substantiation of what I've been saying for the past few videos. Remember, at the beginning of Zeilinger's argument, it is the argument that information is the thing that allows us to reduce the uncertainty of a measurement outcome. And so what I'm saying in my previous section with the point in the continuum is that the symmetry arises due to a lack of information. And what I'm saying is that quantum mechanics is a consequence of that lack of information and quantum mechanics is associated with symmetry. So if you think about it, this stuff really works together quite well when you associate entropy with symmetry and that arises due to a lack of information because you can't predict the future without information. So before we go to the conclusion of this video, I want to give a shout out to one more physicist who thinks a lot like me. So like I said, I worked at the quantum information theorist for seven years, and I was surrounded by uh, quantum physicists every day for seven years. <laughs> and whenever I would share my ideas about what I thought quantum mechanics was to people, they, the response usually was, that makes a lot of sense. And I literally had one person go, oh, shit. So I, so I think that I really have a good idea here. And when I was explaining the, my ideas to one of my colleagues, they introduced me to the work of Nicholas Gissen. And Nicholas Gissen is a Swiss physicist who makes a lot of the same arguments that I do, which is the idea that points in a continuum are not physical or that information really is finite. And due to that finiteness of information, there is a lack of determinism in the universe. And he does this in his own way using what, what is called intuitionist mathematics to introduce randomness into numbers. He makes the argument that physics implicitly assumes the existence of infinite precision or numbers with infinite information. And so he makes a lot of the same arguments that I do. So I just wanted to make a mention. Uh, people can look at his work as well to see very similar arguments to mine that are being made. So fundamentally, like Zeilinger and myself, he also seems to work off the idea that uncertainty is an inherent truth of reality that can't be avoided. And like I said, uncertainty is ignorance. Ignorance is entropy, and entropy implies symmetry. So that would mean that symmetry is also an undeniable, always present truth of reality. So to summarize, what I'm claiming is that the principle, of, the main principle of quantum mechanics that we can use to build our intuitions about the physical nature of reality is that there isn't infinite information because that would require infinite energy to store infinite information. So instead, let's assume something like a machine precision of the universe. And beyond that, all we have are symmetries of things that are consistent with the constraint data, where the constraint data here is the configuration of energy and matter. So we're using the configuration of energy and matter as our information, as that which breaks symmetry. So this is some, another video I'm going to do in the future when I talk about space is reconceptualizing mass as that 
that allows for distinguishability. And because of distinguishability, there is structure. And from structure, we have a broken symmetry that allows us to actually conceptualize the idea of being over here versus over there, which is the nature of space. And so what I'm arguing is that our universe, the fabric or the nature of our universe, is one in which there is what I call a physical side, which is associated with the configuration of energy and matter. And then there is the side of symmetries or the virtual side or the side of the quantum that is associated with all the symmetries of the universe, such that any physical system is not perfectly well defined. Instead, there's always entropy, there's always uncertainty, there's always symmetry, unavoidably. And so this is my main argument. And to answer Chris Fuchs' question, why do we use the mathematics of quantum mechanics that we do? Well, when I showed in, Z in the Zeilinger example, is that the arisal of the irreducible uncertainty in measurements comes from the fact that the two-level system in quantum mechanics, which is the, the most elementary system there is, is actually described by a symmetry group. And that's why that arises. And so one thing, again, that I think is unique to me is that I associate entropy or uncertainty or ignorance with symmetry. So if it is the case that the physical motivation is that there simply isn't infinite information or infinite energy in the universe, if that is the consequence of why quantum, then it would make sense why the mathematical structure of quantum mechanics is saturated with symmetry. And in fact, for those who don't know, the Schrodinger equation itself only does unitary transformations. Like the dynamics of quantum mechanics are unitary transformations, which are what? They're information preserving algebraic symmetry transformations. That's what they are. And I will do another video later where I discuss the concept of the arrow of time in terms of quantum mechanics and, and the notion of symmetry versus non-symmetry transformations. And so that's my answer to Chris Fuchs. The mathematics that we use is a consequence of the fact of a lack of information. But unlike Giffen, who uses intuitionist mathematics to insert a lack of determinism in physics, instead, what I propose is physical systems are defined up to a symmetry. And those symmetry represent voids or holes. So that every single point of a physical system, when you're trying to say what exactly is the configuration of, the, uh, of that system, at every single point, there is a void. And if there's a void here, then there's a void over here. And so what you have is that at every point in the universe, you apply, you add a symmetry, which the surface of ignorance that I found in my paper, A Differential Geometric Approach to Quantum Ignorance Consistent with the Tropic Properties of Statistical Mechanics, these are fiber bundles. And applying symmetry at each point in space-time is already something that we do in quantum field theory and gauge theories. And so this is why I think that when I said that this changes everything in my video, this changes everything associating entropy with symmetry, it starts tying us to the foundations of quantum mechanics in a way that is physically motivated and intuitive. And so with that, this is the end of the video. Before, uh, before signing off, please don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel and share it with a friend. Because again, I want to make this something that can provide for me and my family. And so to get monetized, I need at least a thousand subscribers and 4,000 hours of watch time. And so if you could watch my older videos or go to my podcast, which is also a playlist on my channel and start watching those videos, that would be very helpful to help me get monetized so that I can continue to bring this content to you because this, I, this is what I think is the most important thing I should be doing right now. And I would agree, greatly appreciate any help I can get. And with that, stay turtling, my friends. Peace.